afternoon and welcome to Beauty and the Beast. And welcome to our beauties, Diana Fisher. Hello, my love. Anne Wills. Hi, John. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you, Anne. Rosemary Margan. Hello, John. You well, Rosemary? I'm very well. Fighting fit. Good. Nice to see you. Don't be fighting too much. <laughs> I'll try not to. Ina Howard. Hello, John. Hi. I never fight. No, I know. She's such a <laughs> quiet person. Hello, thing. everybody. Okay, letter number one that comes to us from Essendon in Victoria, from Mrs. R.A., who writes, My grandchildren never remember my birthday, and this hurts my feelings terribly. It would mean so much to me just to get a card or a phone call, but there's never anything. They're all in their teens, so they shouldn't have to be told. I'm too proud to start dropping hints or anything. How can I make sure that they think of me, or am I being selfish? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nothing. How would you like it if nobody remembered your birthday? They wouldn't dare. I mean, I know you're a Libra, and I'll mm -hmm. send you a birthday card. Thank you, darling. But wouldn't you be disappointed if I didn't? No. I think you'd have other things to do, but I, I would if I was a grandmother. Okay, well, what's your advice to Mrs. R.A. of Essendon in Victoria? Mrs. R.A., don't be too proud to drop hints or anything, because I don't think it's very fair that anybody forgets grandmothers, mothers, or anything. But... Did she never have a card ever? Is this a, a trend they started when they were Anne, children? Did they you hear the? You heard me read the letter. <laughs> yes, I did. Well, that's you, the I only did. information I have. For oh that. well, in that case, we, we have to assume that she's. This is a trend that children started from, from knee high, so therefore they were, should have been told by their parents to write letters to Mrs. R A. Mrs. R A. Please drop a hint next birthday. They oh. better still talk to your son or your daughter and make sure that they bring their children up properly to remember right. their grandmas. Birthday is very yes. important. It should be just as simple as that. For sure. Don't you think, Rosemary? I think, John, that she's got to get back to the problem. She's got to get the children uh, to come and get to know her better. They have to get a, uh, a thing going, a friendship. They have to get on the same level so that the children will naturally remember that so that she'll be a friend more than just a grandma somewhere in the background. They have to get together more. Mm. Yeah, sometimes that's difficult. I, you know, it can be an awful nuisance to have to remember grandma, sweet and all as the majority <laughs> of them are, but for teenage kids to have to go and visit grandma can be an awfully mm. tiresome thing when they want to go roller skating or something. <laughs> I guess well, grandma has go... to learn to gra go roller yeah, skating. I, I think it's the know. parents. I really blame yeah. the parents. I think so the I. parents should see to it that the, that the children treat their grandma properly. Of course, the expert advice on grandmas, <laughs> even great-grandmas, <laughs> must come from Ina Howard. Right. <laughs> now, John, just cut it out. I am a grandma. My eldest is only 14. And he still comes to see me. I don't think you can drop a hint, darling. There's one thing you can do, and do it very, very well. Do you send them some money, or some <gasps> Christmas oh. presents, or birthday presents? Oh, here she goes. Oh, here buying she affection. A no, no, not at all. <laughs> if you do it, my sweet, then don't. Don't do it. Just stop. And they will realise that you still are a human being. There are so many people think that when you pass 30, that you're no longer a human being. You are one until the day you die. Right. And you have every right to be remembered. And if you are not, then don't do it. Now, my little grandson is nine. We had a little bit of an argument. When it came Christmas, he said he wouldn't come to me anymore. No birthday presents. It killed me. But he came down afterwards, and the little Said, girl, where's the with the present, uh, because he saw I bought uh, the others one, he came down with the present, hello, Grandmama, how are you, darling? And I said, I'm well, sweetie. Up we go. I, I said, think you're off. teaching this child to be avaricious. I don't really mind. None if of you he wants a right present from me, he remembers me, he treats me with respect. <laughs> so he should. None of you have got the right idea at all. Nobody's asked well, you yet. that's what right. you think. <laughs> Can I be asked? Yes. Right. Um, I think you sound a super lady, and of course people love presents. I love birthdays. I love parties of any kind. Why does it, she sound a super lady? That's, well, I, I just think she... When, when you do she might be an old witch. We don't well, know. Well, I think nice things about nice people, and I think she sounds super. And also, there are two things you can do, and the answer to the problem is... Give the kids a present, which is one of those very nice birthday books in which you can put the family's birthdays oh, as one thing. Yeah, and the Live other thing Diana. is to give a super party for your own birthday. I do it because I love it, and I don't think anybody can give one as good as for yeah. you because you want your own friends. And make it so good that the kids long to come to Granny's party every year. And they get little presents as well, and they say, oh, Granny's having a party. Okay, okay, okay. That's what I do. Yeah. Mrs. R.A., there you are. You've got all sorts of answers there. You'll have to now go and fathom out which one is the most reasonable. I really do think you should talk to your own children and suggest to them that it would be a nice idea if they were brought up in a correct manner 
and taught to remember their grandma's birthday and How Christmas. How can the mother do anything with a teenager if they don't want to do it? I didn't ask you that question, did I? I know, but I was telling you. Ah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the, that's the idea of parenthood. When they're, whether they're teenagers when or whether they're, they're teenagers, adults. If they want to remember their grandmother, they will. You must always give them advice. Whether or not they accept that advice, of course, is entirely up to them. Anyway, Mrs. R.A. of Essendon in Victoria, I hope that uh, semi solves your problem. <laughs> if you have a problem and you'd like to write to us, you address your letters Beauty and the Beast, Post Office Box 144, North Ride 2113, and we'll do with your problem what we did with that one, <laughs> and we'll do with another one in just a minute. <laughs> Mrs. M. O. of Caringbar in New South Wales writes to us and wants a little aid. I want to ask your help in my problem. I'm in my early 60s. My children are all away and married. My husband's quite a boring man. And I feel that I miss out on a lot of fun. I've met another man who's in his mid-40s and makes me feel good. Oh. Wants me to go away with him on a holiday. Oops. And if we feel we like each other good enough, good enough, mm. to live with him for good, do you think I should do so? He promises that he'll look after me when I grow old, if I grow older. Well, no doubt about it, darling, he will. Is the age difference too much, or should I forget about him and stay with my husband? I've been married for over 40 years. And he don't seem a day too much. Please advise me, Diana Fisher. Oh, oh my dear heart, don't you do any of those naughty things. That's not on. You're married. If you have a nice relationship with somebody else, I've got lots of chums. Uh, I'm still married, and I've got relationships with lots of nice gentlemen. What I do is ask them home to dinner if you have something in common, an interest, like a theatre or a movie, that your old man doesn't want to go to. Well, then take him along. I mean, awesome. make it all into part of the family, but for breaking up a marriage after 40 years, it does get a little boring. Of course it does, but perhaps you're boring. Perhaps you should change the things that you're doing, get involved with new things. But don't go off with a man of 40. My darling, I, when you get older, I think he's got an eye to your money or ulterior motives. Mm? <laughs> mm, no. She's in her 60s. Yes, I know. Mm. And he's in his mid-40s. Yes. Mm. 15, 20 yeah. years. Mm. A bit a, naughty. Yeah. It's a long, I mean, it's a big difference. Isn't <laughs> it? oh, I, don't I mean, it's almost as great as the difference between Nina and myself, one could say. Are you older, well, Nina? <laughs> You'll get it, Anne. You will get it. Yeah, you said that last time. Promises, promises. I'm tired of all this. Ina, what should this lady do? Well, like I said in the last question, everybody's an individual until they die. Uh, whereas I'm a reasonably moral woman, I think you've, you're out of love with your husband, and I don't think any human being should have to live with one man for the rest oh. of their lives. But for God's sake, love, don't play the field. If you want the man of 40, if you're 20, 30, 15 years younger, you have him. Go to your husband, be very honest about it, and say, look, I'm out of love with you. You are, or you wouldn't say, my husband is a boring man. So he's a boring man. You may be a boring lady, but that has nothing to do with it. What has to do with it is the fact that you are in love with another man. Now, if you only get two years of happiness, it is worth the next 20 of hell. You go with him and leave him, the same as you would do if you were 30. 30-year-olds 30 leave their husbands and go with somebody else. 20-year-olds, 40-year-olds. Why should you be restricted because you're 60? You do as you like, my darling. Well, suddenly she'll be 70 and he'll be 50. Well, suddenly oh, she'll cares? be 70. Oh. Suddenly uh, she might be dead. Yeah. And so suddenly, oh. why should she waste the rest of her life with a man that is boring? And in the meantime, this fellow that she's been married to for 40 years, who's provided for her, assumedly, given her children, given her a great deal of happiness... No, just, happens no, to no, be no, quiet, just excuse Ina, be quiet. me, just Please be a good girl, Ina. Uh, I'm please very be, good. Please be uh, nice yes. now. This man has been married to this woman for 40 years. Yes. He's given her children, admittedly she helped, but he has uh, hopefully yes, supported she did a little, her. I must admit. He's helped to bring up the children. He's well, probably so paid their way, yes, and now all of a sudden, yes, because she thinks he's boring, she's going to be off like an Arab in the night with some 40 year old. You are assuming what? that well, so he you. paid the way. She might have worked every day of those 40 years except for the fortnight she was in hospital having the babies. Yeah. But we don't, don't know. know. We, we don't know that. So, so let's take the norm. I know it's very difficult for you to be normal, that is, but let's, that is take, the norm. let's take the norm. Over and above that, she has worked at home. What do you think housework is? Bringing up the kids, doing the garden. No, I think it's just... terrible. I'd hate to have to do it. I feel very sorry for well, you. Well, I don't, don't feel it's do terrible, housework. but it's still work. The woman is entitled to do what her heart tells her, the same as you are, the same as I am. But this fella is off for a bit of experimentation. Well, he wants to... Shush, 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 shush. 
He wants me to go away with him on a holiday, and if we feel we like each other good, good enough, enough yes. to live with him for good. Well, if right. you like him well enough, darling, go on a holiday, but tell your husband and what you're doing. And what's going to happen to poor old hubby who's battled well, oh, there for 40 hubby years is to an individual. Su support this immoral woman? He's oh, had a good run, run he's had John. What on earth are you talking about? <laughs> She's been fooling around with this other man. How does she know that well, he makes her feel good? Can you, uh, well, can you tell me... That, that there aren't 60% of the people fooling around with other people? Why is this woman any different? Why should she be branded because she's of her age? How mm. dare you Nobody think that? Well, well, you really do have an uh, age complex, and I don't I blame no you. I have no age complex. <laughs> I don't even think of age. Age doesn't worry me. But when I hear somebody say... But she's not being branded because of her age. She's being branded because of the fact that she's been married and accepted a man for 40 years, for better or for worse, and so towards the end he got a bit boring. She's in the mid-sixties, he's probably 70, poor Everybody doddering old fella. Everybody accepts them for better his or way worse. Life. And they're allowed to divorce. I mean, why are you making one rule for one and one rule for another? Well, is she not talking about divorce? Maybe She's talking I don't about going off for a naughty divorce. weekend, and if flutter. they make each other feel well, good, it'll continue. then they'll go continue. together. And how many people are not living together? How many people have not left their husbands? But, Why should this woman because, have to be different? Well, how many people are running around raping other people? It doesn't make it right, you know, does it? No, no, it doesn't. But how many old fellows are marrying a girl 25? But it's very silly to say how many people are doing this and everybody's it doing that. It isn't silly, Because everybody's doing it, it doesn't make it I think you're right. being silly. It is mm -hmm. silly. Mm -hmm. And I shall pause for a moment to chastise Ina Harwood and we shall come back with more of the problem of Mrs. M.O. of Caring Bar. I hope you can wait there for us. <laughs> Well, Mrs. M.O. of Caring Bar in New South Wales, we're sort of halfway through your <laughs> problem. <laughs> Anne. Ah, oh, look, Mrs. Good Enough. Um, well, it's, she says if they like each other, oh, good enough. Right. You ask, is the age <laughs> difference too enough. much? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that a name? Um, M.O. Mrs. Oh, Mrs. M.O. Mostly M. on. Yes. Or? But look, you, you on, asked us, is the age difference too much? I don't think it is for him. Um, and obviously it's not for you. I agree with Ina. Look, who cares? You could be run over by a bus tomorrow. Enjoy it. If it feels good, do it. Wow. But we're all feeling <laughs> this great no. compassion for Mrs. M.O. came out. Nobody cares about <laughs> Look, Mr. M.O. boring old what? hubby's had 40 years of... He's had a good trot. I reckon he's How do you know it's been time. good with this woman with a You don't know. It eye. hasn't been. She says he's boring. I take your word for it. She should know. She's good enough. She should know. <laughs> Do it, darling. <laughs> Go on the holiday. Don't divorce him so that when mm. you're old one... No, no, I won't get into that. Yes, you see what you're saying, though? You're yes. saying go on a holiday, don't divorce him. In other Have words, go and try him? this fella out. Yes. And if he is good enough... If he's good enough, Mrs. Good do enough. it. Toss the old man that's been hanging around for 40 years. Toss him away. How do you know he's... Break making... his poor, wretched little heart. Oh, oh, listen oh, to Mr. Compassion. Which proves that she hasn't had an affair with him. Diana so Fisher, had you ha haven't you had, had your answer, Ina? No, it's I believe I have. Yes, I believe you have too, so could you contain <laughs> yourself? Diana, you haven't. I did, I did, I did. I said naughty, naughty. It was Rosemary yes. that didn't say oh, Rosemary. It's me that's being very quiet because I keep thinking of the trend that seems to be happening in Melbourne at the moment where um, young men like older ladies. It's a big trend happening. It's, it's rather wow. amazing. It's axiomatic. Yes. Oh, there are even oh. places We've where older ladies can go. And I. <laughs> <laughs> so there's hope for Mrs. Mrs. M.O. She can come down there and we can introduce you to Ooh. some really nice young guys. Yeah. But I don't think it's the answer. I really don't. Because the time comes when you do have to look at yourself in the mirror and you have to be able to respect yourself. And I think there's too much difference. And you have to remember to your husband, um, you did love him once. The time has come when perhaps he's a little boring. Maybe you've got to liven him up a bit. Make life more interesting around the house. See if you can get him going again. That's yes. my answer. Stick mm. his finger in a light socket. <laughs> Well, That'll get him going. Funny ideas. Where'd you get so you, you think that this lady should go ahead with this yes, liaison? Yes, I do. Life is too short, John. You should know that. How come you drink coffee and we don't get any? Why don't we have tea and crumpet? Oh. <laughs> right, we'll stick with the water. I like crumpets, <laughs> don't you, with butter Would you, and would you like to continue, the pro perhaps finish the program just talking among yourselves? Yes, That's sure. Right. We Where have to get that dress. What about oh, the guys, my Christmas though. dress? So we'll move on to another letter that comes from Queensland, from Sunny Bank in Queensland. Oh, yes. Right. The only one that was right about Mrs. M.O. incidentally was Rosemary. Oh, thank of you, John. She's oh. Rosemary's lovely. <laughs> Mrs. D.L. of Sunnybank in Queensland. My husband thinks I'm a terrible cook. But the truth is, he's a terrible eater. <laughs> oh, isn't that lovely? Even if I go to a lot of trouble making something from a magazine or cookbook, can't you imagine it? Mm. Uh -huh. He puts salt and tomato sauce all over <laughs> everything. All he wants are chips and greasy things that aren't good for him and are no fun for me. 
How can I change his habits? Oh. Anne. Oh, I knew you were going to do this to me first. Uh, <clears throat> Mrs. D.L. Yes, it's awful having to cook for a terrible eater, I know that. Um, I'm a bit worried when you said you, you, even if you went to the bother of preparing things out of a magazine, I mean, you could be giving him shoe polish and God knows what else. Um, <laughs> it, it depends what page he's on. Tastes you know. all right with tomato sauce. I just think the problem is your husband's typically, tomato sauce, of course. It's typically Australian, salt and tomato sauce. And it is no fun for you. Why don't you cook yourself something cordon bleu? Let him have his chips and tomato sauce. I see you've categorised Australian men as all being terrible eaters. I, Typical Australian. Is, salt and tomato sauce. I detest tomato, tomato sauce. Tomato sauce is Australia's staple diet. You learned that when you are at school. I don't eat tomato sauce and I'm Australian. Are you? I think you have a hide to categorise all Australian men as being terrible eaters, just because the ones that you've encountered, and I would think there have been many, have been oh. tomato sauce eaters. You should know, darling. You were there last night. <laughs> She's a bad woman. She's a bad woman. What were you doing? Rosemary. <laughs> Yes, I think, I think she's got a real problem here. She really has. She's got to educate him, obviously, because there's a lot more to life than tomato sauce and chips. But um, it doesn't hurt to give him those as well. You've really got to do it and do it very slowly. Educate the man to eat properly, take him to restaurants and, and um, slowly educate him. That's about all I can say. He's got to learn, otherwise your life's going to be so miserable. But why does he have to learn? If he's happily going through his life eating his but chips and tomato sauce... He's missing why out not on so much. Why I mean, not you let have him to be? Ina, why, well, you'd let him be, wouldn't you? I would. Yes. Yes. I don't think you have a right to change people. <laughs> I think people change as they go along in life. You don't have the right to say what kind of taste buds he has and what kind of taste buds you have. I like a chip and a tomato sauce occasionally, <laughs> but I also don't agree that all men or all Australians only eat tomato sauce and salt and stuff or whatever and said. I don't agree with that. I think that people eat a lot of rich foods which are indeed not as good for him as perhaps a little steak and tomato sauce. And if he wants to eat it, you cook yourself whatever you like, dear. Let him eat what he likes or you're on the road to destruction in your marriage. Yes, I agree with you about trying to change people's habits. I mean, Thank she you. married him for what he was with his chips and tomatoes. <laughs> she must have known But that's really what the wedding that. ceremony is all about, isn't it? I'll alter him. Ah, oh, no. It is. Oh. It True. really is. Diana, you don't mind life? if you don't answer this telephone, uh, this, um, <laughs> this telephone. letter. No, I didn't hear the bell ringing. Uh, because your, uh, <laughs> your dealings with men, I feel, have been rather more cosmopolitan, and I'm not quite sure that you're attuned <laughs> to the taste of the average Australian. Well, are you saying we that shall, we all are? <laughs> I was saying I share her problem, because my old man's a fussy eater too. We shall delete Diana Fisher from our diet. Out. And return in just a minute. Here's a letter that comes to us from Bendigo in Victoria from Mrs. K.P. About 18 months ago, my husband and I attended a party where one of the wives continually flirted outrageously with all the husbands, including mine. Later, we all laughed about it, but the only one who took us seriously was my husband. Since then, he's seen her constantly and now wants to move out and live with her, leaving me, my children and her husband in a state of shock. I feel I might have neglected him in some way for him to behave like this. Is there anything I can do to stop him making this terrible mistake? Well, it's an assumption that's a terrible mistake. He might be desperately in love. Mightn't he die? Yes, he might indeed. Uh, my only feeling is that these kind of things won't last. There isn't enough time to really get to know. I, I've been at a party when people have done this and one married guy turned around and said to his wife, what the heck am I doing? I'm being absolutely harassed by this lady. And uh, maybe this is exactly what she did and she picked on so somebody who was weird. So you stopped, did you? Um, yeah, me, uh, yes, mm, yes. Yeah, mm. <laughs> anyway, it won't last. Um, so, you know, I, I'm sorry about that. Anyway, Perhaps you can treat him a bit better. presumption to say it won't last. How do you know it won't last? It was going to last but the 60 year old and the 40 year old. Why <laughs> We've argued about those. Year? I don't think it'll last. Uh, Ina, dear. Um, I think, dear, you should talk to your husband. I mean, you do have young children and I feel that it's a great shame to destroy your marriage at this stage. However, if your husband is, is desperate in love with a woman, there is nothing you can do. You cannot alter it when somebody falls in love and falls out of love. But ask him to give it a little time and think about it. And otherwise, whatever you do, don't involve your children in a nasty battle. Let the husband see them and hopefully he'll keep them and keep you. Rosemary. Yes, I think the only thing she can really do is hold on by letting go. He's going to have to go and work it out for himself. As Ina said, I agree. Be careful of the children. That's number one importance. Mm. And even if you are hurt, remember that the only chance you've got is to let him go and work it out for himself. You can't hold him any other way. No. Anne. 
Uh, I agree with what our ladies have all said, really. I, I think it's, it's 18 months ago that they met at the party, wasn't it? Yes. So, therefore, the guy has had 18 months of flirtatious um, tater tapes. I would think he's probably pretty serious about it. I think, about about I think so, too. Uh, the only thing that worries me is the fact that, that, that first of all, our lady, Mrs KP, said that, that she flirted with every man at the party, yes. and the only one that took it seriously was her husband. So let's just hope that the lady's days of flirting are over, because then the husband's going to feel he's um, got himself in a little bit of strife. But um, I think, obviously, not, as Ina says, you're not going to change the fact that he wants to live with her. Let him go and live with her. And, and as Rosemary says, let him go and hope that that way you can hang yeah. on eventually. I think it's a bit tough to <clears throat> ask the lady to accept the fact that her husband is going to go away and experiment with another woman, and if it doesn't work out, just yeah. to take but him back. She's obviously very much in love with him, and, and love mm. forgives a, an awful lot of things. She can take it easy you without taking me? back. You can't hold it. We love you. Oh. It's time to go. And we <laughs> really do have Today to go. We love him. Mrs. Okay. Casey, I hope uh, we've helped you solve your problem. Diana Fisher, goodbye. Goodbye, John Laws. Ann Wills. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rosemary Morgan. John. And Ina Harwood. Goodbye, John. Goodbye, <laughs> Thank you for being with us for Beauty and the Beast. Hope you might join us again tomorrow at the same time. another sizzling episode of Beauty and the Beast tomorrow, 2.30. Stand by now for news break and then a super adventure with the $6 million man in pilot error.